Crypto Caesar, Caesar Capital, hope you're well. It's the 27th of October, 2023. Today, we're going to consider um, crypto market cycles. I've done more specific videos on the four-year cycle on Bitcoin dominance on altcoins, etc. So if you want more of an in-depth look at those, go back and look at those videos. But this is more of a broad brush approach towards uh, crypto market cycles. Because the bottom line is, guys, if you can understand the cycle of the market that you are participating in, you're going to have an edge over other market participants. OK, you're going to have an edge over other people. Um, and crypto markets in particular are very cyclical in nature. OK, there are cycles within cycles within cycles. And if you can understand the basics of these cycles, it's going to allow you to get that edge. It's going to allow you to improve your position and it's going to allow you to hopefully make more money and enjoy the experience more. So of crypto when you enter the crypto market. So what we're going to consider today is um, the fact that there are um, essentially two uh, Bitcoin cycles. Historic data suggests there are two Bitcoin cycles. We're going to consider the altcoin cycle and how this is linked to the Bitcoin cycle. And we're going to consider Bitcoin dominance and how this plays a big role in the altcoin cycle. So Bitcoin follows two cycles. Both are slightly different. OK, the first cycle is the halving cycle and the halving cycle is based on blocks mined. So every 210,000 blocks, there is um, the end of one cycle and the beginning of another cycle. OK, the block reward is halved and the new cycle begins. A lot of people refer to this and incorrectly so as the four year cycle. Whilst it's quite close to being four years, on some occasions, it's not that close uh, at all to being four years. It can be some months out. OK, but the, the first cycle is the halving cycle, and that's based on blocks mine, not time. The second cycle, which is I've been identified uh, by analysts, is the four year cycle. And this is more of an exact measurement, really, because this cycle measures the top of one cycle to the top of the next cycle, to the bottom of the next cycle, to the bottom of the next cycle, etc. So you're measuring essentially from peak to peak and bottom to bottom. And this gives more of an exact timing within cycles. And understanding this can, uh, over the halving cycle can give you uh, a bit more of an edge in the market. So let's consider the, the halving cycle first. So the halving cycle, as we know, is based on every uh, 210,000 blocks mined and not time. OK, so every 210,000 blocks, one cycle ends, another cycle begins. And if you look at the left of the screen, you can see uh, that the first cycle wasn't far off uh, eight, uh, four years. So it's 204 bars. Four years is 208.7 weeks, I think. So um, 204 weeks isn't too far off uh, four years. However, when we had the first uh, halving, Bitcoin then began its new or its its, its fresh cycle. And that only took um, 185 weeks from uh, November 28th of November 2012 to July 2016. So that was considerably off uh, four years, some months off, in fact, four years. The next cycle took, as you can see, from July 2016 to May 2020, 198 weeks again. You know, that's 10 weeks off, so almost three months off uh, four years. Uh, and the next cycle, we think, might come in in the first two weeks of April. If it comes in on the 15th of April, the next halving, that will be 204 weeks, so a month off uh, uh, four years. So what you can see here is that it's not, it's not four years really at all. Sometimes it can be close to four years, but sometimes it can be three months away from four years. Uh, so it's not really uh, that accurate, but it gives you a general flow of what's happening. And of course, if you are uh, an investor and you just simply buy Bitcoin just before the halving or just after the halving, the, the historical data suggests you're gonna do pretty well out of that trade. However, if you understand the four year cycle, which we can see here, you might get a bit of a better edge over those people who are simply just buying Bitcoin around about the halving time when the FOMO kicks in. So you can see here the the halving dates um, are uh, listed in the vertical yellow lines. And you can see that I've noted the peaks and the troughs of each cycle in um, a, an orange circle. And to the left of the screen, you can see 
uh, the first peak uh, in Bitcoin around about 2014. Uh, and then when we met, if we measure from that peak to the next peak in 2018, it's 208 weeks. So uh, exactly four years. And then if we measure the bottom in the cycle of 2015 on the left of the screen to the bottom in the middle of the screen, uh, you can see there in 2018, December 2018, that was 206 weeks. So just two weeks off uh, four years. And then we've got the peak of 2018 to the peak in November 2021. That was 206 weeks, so only a couple of weeks off, four years. And then we had the bottom in 2018 to the bottom in uh, 2022, uh, uh, 21, sorry, uh, 22, November 22, sorry about that. And that was exactly 208 weeks. So it was bang on time, okay? Now, the, the last top in uh, November or so, 2021, if we measure that 208 weeks, that takes us to about the 3rd of November or so, 2025. So if the four-year cycle continues, we can assume, um, based on historical data, that the top for Bitcoin might come in around about the sort of beginning, uh, end of October, beginning mid of November, 2025. But the importance of understanding this, the four-year cycle over the halving cycle, right, is because... If you understand the four year cycle, you would have been taking position on Bitcoin at the four year cycle low. Yeah, not at the halving or close to the halving. And if you had taken position on the Bitcoin uh, four year cycle low, um, you would have taken a much better position and you would be significantly more to the upside than any other market participant who is taking position close to the Bitcoin uh, halving uh, event. And the other reason as well, I suppose, is um, you can gauge those tops a little bit better, can't you? Because those tops are coming in. And of course, the halving cycle doesn't help you with peaks. It only helps you with when a new cycle starts. But understanding the four-year cycle not only allows you to get in um, closer to the bottom, but it also allows you potentially, if the four-year cycle continues, uh, to get out closer to the top. Now, I think my view is that the four year cycle continues. It's not broken yet. Um, I think this cycle will follow the four year cycle. The only red flag for me would be if Bitcoin rallies in 2023 to and um, beyond an all time high. I think that would be an indication that the four year cycle then is broken because Bitcoin has never done that before. And therefore, that would be a red flag for me to potentially start taking profit on positions if we start breaching the all-time high in 2023. If we don't breach the all-time high in 2023 and we wait for the halving and we start moving to the upside in 2024 and breaking the all-time high then, then for me, Bitcoin's still following this, this perfect uh, four-year uh, cycle. So understanding the four-year cycle to the halving cycle, you can see, gives you a real edge over other people. Okay, this is what I like to call the Bitcoin cycle rhythm. And if you look from the left to the right of the chart, you can see that there is a red box, a green box, a red box, a green box, etc. The red box uh, indicates a one year bar, bear market, sorry, and the green box indicates a three year bull market. And you can see the rhythm of Bitcoin is quite clear since flying out of the first halving. There has always been one year bear market, three year bull market, one year bear market, three year bull market, one year bear market, etc. And that is why uh, we are at Caesar Capital quite confident based on this historical data that we have seen the low in Bitcoin. There are no more lows to come uh, beyond uh, the low in uh, 2022. Uh, and we are now in the first stages of a bull market. OK, so let's look at altcoins um, in particular and how they might uh, be affected by the Bitcoin cycle. And it's quite... Uh, clear uh, that, well, at least the, the past historical data suggests altcoins do follow the Bitcoin cycle, but um, they in fact follow the halving cycle rather than the four-year cycle. And that's why it's important to understand this cycle within another cycle, within another cycle, right? And we can also uh, consider why Bitcoin dominance has to be extremely high and has to start to decline before an altcoin rally uh, begins and how Bitcoin dominance plays a real key role or an indicator or an indication of the beginning of an alt season. So this is the altcoin cycle. I, I, um, I like to use the chart called Others. 
Others is essentially the top 150 cryptocurrencies minus the top 10. The reason why I like to use others is because um, total two and total three, which are the other um, charts which track uh, the altcoin market, um, track um, the top 10 uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, so others essentially is the top 150 cryptos minus the top 10. And why that's important to me is because when you have the top 10 involved in, in the uh, chart, it kind of starts to cloud things. But most importantly, within the top 10, you've got uh, USDT stablecoin and you've got USDC stablecoin. They have a massive dominance over the market. They didn't have previously, and that's why you could use the, the total two, total three charts, but they do now. Uh, USDT has a market um, cap of around about, um, I don't know, 85 billion or so, and USDC um, similarly large. So removing those uh, from the market cap or the dominance kind of gives you a bit more of um, an indication and removes the cloud and removes the noise really and allows you to see actually what's happening uh, within the altcoin market without having to be clouded by stable coins, which are essentially stable, right? No point looking at those, uh, not for the purposes of this chart anyway. So we can see here that there's a clear cycle uh, with the altcoins going all the way back to March 2014. On the left of the screen, you can see that there is an area of accumulation. And then when the Bitcoin halving happens, again, um, noted in the yellow vertical lines here, um, there is a breakout. So we can see to the left of the screen, second halving. Prior to that, there was a long area of accumulation. As soon as the halving comes, uh, the altcoin market breaks out and goes uh, into uh, a phase of discovery to the upside, comes back down, um, then into um, an area of accumulation. Then as soon as the third Bitcoin halving came in 2020, again, like clockwork, it broke out of that range discovery phase up it went and then back down into um, the area of accumulation um, and my view is that the likelihood is the past information that we have indicates to us that the likelihood is is that this market will not break out the altcoin uh, market will not break out until we are close to or just after the halving which of course is around uh, in the first two weeks of april 2024 uh, so understanding this is going to give you an edge, right, over other people, uh, because you understand when it's going to break out, or at least historically when it's broken out. And this gives you some time to accumulate and work out what's going on. And the reason why understanding this gives you also secondly gives you an edge is because if you were taking positions um, on altcoins uh, in the four year cycle low, in my view, you're just taking on way too much risk and you just don't even know what the narrative is going to be for the next cycle. So you're better off, in my view, taking positions in Bitcoin at the four year cycle low, riding that up nicely, getting a decent return. At this point, you'd, you know, if you'd taken in 15, 16 K, you'd be 100 percent up on your position. And now you are close uh, to the um, Bitcoin halving event, which means that you can start looking to take positions and altcoins. And I've listed a six month window you can see in each chart 26 bars prior to each halving event which gives you that window of of what we like to call the window of opportunity um and this window of opportunity is about six months it's a maximum of six months okay that means that you know you, it might be a lot shorter than six months but the past data indicates to us that you have about six months before there is a breakout the other reason uh, to wait as well is because um, the narrative um, changes each year or each cycle rather. So in the first cycle, altcoin cycle, we had the narrative was ICOs. In the last cycle, it was NFTs um, and decentralized finance um, and working out what the narrative might be. You need to be closer to the Bitcoin halving to kind of work out what the narrative is. And it also allows you time to um, do your research on certain altcoins during this uh, phase of accumulation uh, and work out what which narrative you think is going to be strong next cycle and work out which uh, the best you think might be the best performing altcoins. So, you know, having taken position on, on Bitcoin in the four year cycle low, then you've got time to just do all your research on the altcoins. That's exactly what we've been doing at Caesar Capital. 
And that's why we've produced our 33 page document on the best 10 altcoins we see or best performers of the next cycle. We spent our time doing our research and working out what was going to be uh, in, interesting for the next cycle. And now it's the time uh, for uh, position taking in altcoins. And that's what we've been doing since the 28th of September, taking positions in these altcoins and just waiting for the Bitcoin halving. OK, so this is uh, Bitcoin dominance. Now, Bitcoin dominance plays a massive role in the altcoin cycle. OK, it plays a huge role in the altcoin cycle. And you can see when looking right to the left of the screen, the top right there, after the second halving around about um, late 2016, beginning of 2017, Bitcoin dominance was really, really, really high. In fact, it was about 93 percent at that point. Um, but then it fell off a cliff, okay? And that was the beginning of the alt season. You can see um, to the left of the screen where Bitcoin dominance was around 93%, then suddenly, boom, it just dropped off a cliff and down it went. And that's when the altcoin started to rally. So Bitcoin dominance was really high. Then it suddenly started to drop and drop and drop and the altcoins rallied and rallied and rallied. And then we had the euphoric top in 2018, December, January, sorry, January 2018, December 2017, where we had the top in the altcoin market. And Bitcoin dominance at that point was 32%, okay? Then um, everything decided to decline. There was a big sell-off. It went back into um, an accumulation phase and Bitcoin dominance started to rally to the upside like it always does. Uh, hence the reason why um, Bitcoin pairs will lose a lot of value at that point. But anyway, long story short, we then get to uh, the um, the third halving. And a few months after the third halving, we have uh, the uh, Bitcoin dominance at about 72%. Um, so 72%. And at that point, that's when the altcoins started to rally a bit. Then it started to drop down, drop down to about 58%. And that's when they started to rip. Okay. And it dropped off a cliff again, down to about 39% or so. Uh, and arguably um, in April, May, or well, I think it was about April 2021, that was arguably the top for most altcoins. Some altcoins continued to rally when Bitcoin reached its top of 69k later in the year but arguably speaking really most of altcoins had just you know they'd rallied out they'd had their parabolic moment and that was the end of that for them um but then you can see bitcoin the bitcoin top came in bitcoin dominance super low about 36 percent or so and then it started to move to the upside and that's what it's been doing and continuing to do uh for a considerable period of time now and in my view, um, it's going to continue to do that until we get to about 58 to 60 percent. OK, that's where it's probably going to peak out. Um, I think what we have to accept is that in every cycle, Bitcoin dominance has been lower when the altcoins rallied. So in the first altcoin cycle, um, Bitcoin dominance was about 93 percent. And then they started to rally in the second um, altcoin cycle, uh, the altcoin uh, sorry, Bitcoin dominance was about 72% um, before we start seeing movement in alts um, and then parabolic moves as it dropped down. So I think that it's not going to be as high as 72%, certainly not going to be high, high as 93%. I think about 58%, 60% uh, is about right. And you can see on the, on the screen here on the chart that there is a clear resistance area around about the 58% mark. So around about 58%, 60% as we approach the halving will be about right and then once we hit that sort of 68 sorry 58 60 percent mark i think that will then be the signal probably right okay now we're ready to for an alt season to begin and the alt season will begin slowly slowly but then it will start to rip but i think really the big number or the big indicator for us is going to be about 60 percent. that's the point where you need to have your back your bags packed uh, and you're ready for the rip uh, to the upside okay so the conclusion really is and um, i hope you understand now um i hope i haven't rambled too much that historic data indicates that there are two uh bitcoin cycles there's the halving cycle and the four-year cycle and understanding the these two cycles distinctly from one another um will give you an edge over the market uh, and 
the second thing we can take from this video is the altcoin market cycle tends to follow the Bitcoin halving cycle, not the four year cycle. And finally, uh, historic data suggests that we need to have a very high or a super high Bitcoin dominance before the beginning of any parabolic move for altcoins. So that's it, guys. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope that that's given you uh, some understanding and some edge, uh, hopefully, over the market and give you a better experience within the market. If you want to join the group, then reach out to me on Twitter or send me um, uh, uh, an email through the link to the website in the description. Um, we are running a group, as you all know, and if you want to join the group, that's no problem. Just send me an email. If you join the group, you will have instant access to our Caesars 10 altcoin picks, which is a 33 page heavily researched document. And hopefully that will help you on your crypto journey. So that's the video for today. Thank you very much for listening. Click the like, subscribe, try and get the algorithm going for me. Um, it's a hard grind YouTube, but I appreciate all the followers and subscribers I get and the likes. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good day.